SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated marks the return of one of the most iconic licensed characters to enter the 3D platforming fray. Sadly, what's described as a flashy remake feels more like a skin-deep remaster, doing little to fix the issues that plagued the original. Its graphical update is accompanied by some imaginative improvements, but those few bright spots aren't enough to bring Battle for Bikini Bottom's passable but simplistic gameplay up to the standard of a 2020 platformer, let alone impressive recent remakes like the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. As I revisit Battle for Bikini Bottom nearly 17 years later, Rehydrated's 10-ish hour campaign showcased all the missed opportunities to truly modernize this game for first-timers and those of us who look back on it fondly. To its credit, Rehydrated runs cleanly on PS4 Pro. It remastered soundtracks cheery tunes have earwormed their way into my mind, and the actual feeling of running, jumping, and bubble blowing a SpongeBob is precise and responsive. Battle for Bikini Bottom still feels a generation behind though, but his graphical update is largely well done. The bright, cheery, almost neon-drenched world feels a lot closer to the energy of the show and its title character than the original's look. But the adventure around those mechanics remains as limited in scope, design, and overall thoughtfulness as it did back on the original Xbox or PS2. You'd have expected a game about a sponge to have maybe soaked up some of the ideas that have come along since then. Unlike a remaster, a remake can and should do its best to modernize and improve aspects of an original game that haven't aged well. Crash, for instance, felt fresh again when the Insane Trilogy revamped it, while Spyro's Reignited Trilogy became the fiery new standard for what I thought these remakes could do. But Rehydrated rarely does things like that. Every entrance to a new area is saddled with a few seconds of loading time, even when going into a small building like Patrick or Squidward's one-room homes. All three playable characters, SpongeBob, Sandy, and Patrick, have the same repetitive few lines of dialogue that they bleed out after finding collectibles, grabbing health, or hitting enemies. I feel like a new sponge. Oh, sparkly. I love opening presents. By the 30th time I heard them, I just wanted to stop playing. Aside from some great returning lines from supporting characters that still made me chuckle, it's absolutely jarring when one of the original actors doesn't voice their own iconic character, like Mr. Krabs. Clancy Brown was absent in the original and is still not voicing that role in Rehydrated. Do you think I've got bilge water on the brain? And even though that's something we've been told before launch, it's still really disappointing to hear. Overall, Battle for Bikini Bottom is an incredibly easy platformer with only a few truly challenging sections thrown in. The difficulty jump in levels like SpongeBob's Dream is often fun, but there's such whiplash from the rest of the adventure. And when they're done, the challenge reverts to being simplistic and kid-friendly for its final few challenges. Like in the original, you can intermittently swap between SpongeBob, Sandy, and Patrick, often to solve character-specific puzzles. But in a platformer still meant to be enjoyed today, I have to ask why do I have to keep trudging back to a specific location to switch characters instead of just quick swapping with a button? That really doesn't add anything but busy work, and it's an easy example of something a proper remake could have addressed. Battle for Bikini Bottom does add a new wave-based horde mode that lets you and one other person, either locally or online, battle against wave after wave after wave of the robotic enemies you fight in the campaign. And it is... a waste of your time. It's so simplistic, so monotonous, and so unrewarding that it would have been a poor addition when the original Battle for Bikini Bottom debuted in 2003 and is even worse now. There's little to no strategy required, and the characters' unique attacks essentially make no difference. The biggest obstacles, more so than the actual enemies, is that every few waves takes place on a different island, and plenty of enemy attacks can knock you into the surrounding water pretty easily. But so long as one player survives around, you both move on. And both of you dying just resets that wave anyway. Completing all of the islands, each with about three waves, with a friend, took about 30 to 40 minutes. And that 30 to 40 minute segment is something I wish I could get. It's not the worst platform I've ever played, but I am disappointed that rather than addressing any of the real issues with Battle for Bikini Bottom that could have been tweaked without ruining the spirit of the original, 
Rehydrated leaves history intact at the cost of passing on opportunities to make this a better game. It looks good enough, but the problems with the 2003 original have only become more noticeable with age and increased competition. There are bright spots that remain fun almost two decades later, and there are pops of ingenuity in its reworking. But it does so little to stand alongside the best, or even the pretty good, platformer remakes and remasters we've seen this generation. For more on SpongeBob SquarePants, check out our comparison to the original Battle for Bikini Bottom and an extended section of gameplay. And for everything else 3D platformers, you're already in the right place. Jonathan's brain. I mean IGN. You're at IGN.